As if the solar system couldn't get any more fascinating, a brand new study suggests that oceans of water may be hiding within planets Uranus and Neptune. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the renowned astrophysicist and science communicator, has once again stirred the scientific community and captivated the public imagination. This time, he's turned our collective gaze toward the distant planet Neptune. In a recent revelation that sent ripples through both academic circles and popular media, Tyson unveiled new insights suggesting that Neptune might not be what we've long believed it to be. The nature of these findings challenges conventional models of the outer planets and forces a reconsideration of long-standing assumptions in planetary science. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. Neptune, the eighth planet from the Sun, and the farthest known gas giant in the solar system has always been a subject of fascination due to its vivid blue color, dynamic atmosphere, and mysterious internal structure. Until recently, our understanding of Neptune was shaped by data from the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989, ground-based observations, and occasional captures from the Hubble Space Telescope. However, these observations, while invaluable, painted a relatively static and oversimplified picture of the planet. What Tyson brought to light shattered that simplicity. The cornerstone of Tyson's revelation lies in a refined interpretation of Neptune's mass distribution, internal composition, and atmospheric behavior. Leveraging newly calibrated data from high-resolution telescopes, enhanced by machine learning algorithms that sift through petabytes of information collected over decades, the analysis revealed anomalies that don't conform to what current planetary models predict for a gas giant like Neptune. Rather than being a uniform ball of hydrogen, helium, and some methane, Neptune appears to house far more complex structures within its core and atmospheric layers. One of the most striking aspects of this new understanding is the planet's magnetic field. Neptune's magnetic field has always been peculiar. It's tilted at a sharp angle compared to its rotational axis and offset from the planet's center. Tyson's insight highlighted that this magnetic behavior is not just a quirky feature, but possibly indicative of a radically different internal architecture. Instead of a traditional core surrounded by concentric layers of gas, Neptune might have a highly asymmetric internal dynamo. This kind of magnetic configuration could only arise if the internal flows of conductive material likely a mixture of water, ammonia, and methane in superionic or plasma states, are shaped by non-uniform densities and dynamic flows more akin to chaotic turbulence than stable layers. What's even more compelling is the implication that Neptune may not be a gas giant in the way we classify Jupiter and Saturn. Instead, Tyson's team proposes that Neptune occupies a unique category, perhaps more of a super aqua giant dominated by exotic ices and fluids rather than true gases. This changes the landscape of planetary classification. While Uranus has often been lumped into the same category as Neptune, Tyson's interpretation suggests that Neptune diverges even from Uranus in profound ways owing to differences in internal heat, magnetic flux, and material composition. Another major pillar of Tyson's findings involves the planet's atmospheric dynamics. Neptune has always been noted for its fierce winds, the fastest in the solar system, and a highly active weather system despite receiving minimal solar energy. The source of this internal energy has been a subject of debate for decades. Tyson introduced a hypothesis suggesting that Neptune's internal heat isn't solely the result of residual formation energy or radioactive decay. Instead, it may be linked to periodic core instabilities, mini-quakes, or shifts in material phases that generate surges of heat and energy. These energy surges could then ripple outward, fueling the hyperactive atmosphere and spawning the planet's massive storm systems, such as the now fading Great Dark Spot. This revelation carries vast implications. If Neptune's atmosphere is being driven by internal periodic bursts of energy rather than steady state radiation from the core, it reshapes how scientists think about heat transport and atmospheric chemistry on outer planets. It also raises questions about the stability and lifespan of such systems. For example, these internal changes could lead to cycles or even episodes of massive atmospheric rearrangement, making Neptune far more dynamic than previously thought. In this framework, Neptune may undergo periodic seasons, not tied to its axial tilt or orbit, but to internal convulsions that cascade into atmospheric shifts. Moreover, 
Tyson's assertions compel astronomers to reconsider how Neptune's environment interacts with its moons and surrounding space. Triton, Neptune's largest moon and a captured Kuiper Belt object, has long exhibited signs of geologic activity, including cryovolcanism. Tyson suggested that Neptune's fluctuating magnetic field and varying radiation outputs might influence Triton more directly than imagined, possibly inducing surface changes or even subsurface liquid activity. This interplanetary influence hints at a deeper, more intimate relationship between a planet and its moons, a gravitational and electromagnetic partnership that extends far beyond tidal locking or orbital resonances. A further layer to Tyson's message was the re-evaluation of Neptune's place in planetary formation theories. Traditionally, the outer planets were thought to have formed from accreting gas and dust beyond the so-called frost line in the early solar system. However, Tyson posited that Neptune's mass and composition might not match these expectations. It may be a kind of planetary migrant, a body that formed in a different region and was later displaced outward during the chaotic reshuffling of the young solar system. This would account for its high density, anomalous magnetic field, and energy dynamics. If true, Neptune could be the solar system's silent wanderer, carrying with it clues from regions closer to the Sun, or even interstellar material incorporated into its matrix during migration. The discovery also stokes curiosity about exoplanets. Many exoplanets detected so far fall into the Neptune-like category in terms of size and presumed composition. If Neptune itself is not what we thought, what does that say about our interpretations of distant worlds we can only infer through light curves and radial velocities? Tyson's argument indirectly calls into question the parameters astronomers use to model exoplanets. If our local Neptune can harbor such complexity and deviation from models, then many so-called mini-Neptunes might actually be far stranger than imagined, some perhaps possessing layered atmospheres with metallic rains, magnetic anomalies, or hidden oceans beneath high-pressure ices. Additionally, the idea that Neptune might undergo internal energy events brings up speculation about habitability, not on Neptune itself, which is far too hostile, but on its moons. If Neptune releases heat and electromagnetic energy in periodic pulses, it could serve as a sort of furnace for its moons, providing enough energy to maintain subsurface oceans, as some suspect is the case with moons like Enceladus and Europa around Saturn and Jupiter. This adds fuel to the idea that even moons in the outer solar system, seemingly frozen and inert, could be warm cradles beneath the ice, potentially harboring microbial life. Tyson's revelation didn't stop at physical or atmospheric insights. He also introduced the idea that Neptune might be a key player in shaping the outer edge of the solar system. While the influence of Jupiter's gravity on asteroid belts and cometary paths is well understood, Neptune's role has often been underestimated. According to the new model, Neptune's gravitational signature, especially during episodes of magnetic or mass fluctuation, could perturb the orbits of Kuiper Belt objects more significantly than assumed. These gravitational pulses might act as a kind of long-period metronome, rhythmically ejecting or repositioning icy bodies on paths that could one day intersect with the inner solar system. What this suggests is a more dynamic, less inert version of the solar system's periphery. It's no longer just a graveyard of leftover icy bodies, but a playground of complex gravitational interactions, shaped in part by Neptune's own rhythm. This dynamism also raises the question of how long Neptune has been in its current configuration. If it is a planetary migrant, and if its mass or energy outputs are not static, it might have changed more than once in the last 4 billion years, potentially affecting planetary resonances and influencing the orbital mechanics of Uranus, Pluto, and even Saturn. The significance of Tyson's findings lies not just in their specifics, but in what they symbolize. A new frontier in planetary science, one that values nuance, embraces complexity, and challenges assumptions. For years, Neptune was somewhat relegated to the background, overshadowed by the closer grandeur of Jupiter and Saturn, or the drama surrounding Pluto's planetary status. But this revelation places Neptune at the heart of some of the most pressing questions in modern astrophysics. How do planets store and release energy over eons? What does magnetic asymmetry tell us about planetary evolution? How do distant planets shape the architecture of entire solar systems? If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us? What are your thoughts on Neptune's true nature? We want to hear from you. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.